Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Stefano Mariani, and I am a researcher at the University of Modena e Reggio Emilia in Italy. And in these 15 or so minutes, I will be presenting a joint work with uh, Sara Montagna, which is a researcher at the University of, Mod of Bologna, and Emiliano Gamberini, which is a doctor at the uh, Buffalini Hospital in Cesena, Italy. Uh, the work is titled Do Augmenting BDI Agency with a Cognitive Service, General Architecture and Validation in, in Healthcare Domain. Uh, after reviewing briefly the motivations and the main goals uh, behind our joint work, we will uh, go on with defining the central concept for the work, uh, which is the personal medical digital assistant agent as a combination of a, a BDI agent and a cognitive service in terms of a, a predictive model generated through machine learning. Uh, finally, we will validate this work uh, in the context of uh, trauma management, which is uh, a medical operation which involves prompt reactions to uh, evolving situations. Um, the goal of the work is the, to provide assistance to clinical practitioners through a personal medical uh, digital assistant. Uh, this kind of software aids are becoming a key component in digitalized healthcare ecosystems where and especially for tasks uh, in which many different informations need to be considered all together by, uh, by a, a doctor. Uh, in this paper specifically, our contribution is to propose a first practical uh, integration uh, between a BDI agent, which is the way that the PMDA agent is structured in, the, in, uh, in uh, usually, and uh, a cognitive service, which in this case is represented by a predictive pipeline uh, built with machine learning techniques. To validate our work, we will be briefly uh, uh, discussing the trauma management scenario where the uh, prototype has been, has been tested. Um, briefly, uh, PMDA is an intelligent software agent that is meant to assist clinicians and healthcare professionals in their work inside the hospital. Uh, the goal is obviously that of uh, relieving humans from the cognitive overhead of uh, their work, to reduce medical errors, to improve patient safety, and uh, basically to uh, improve the overall efficacy and efficiency of the medical processes. In general, um, a PMDA can be configured as a clinical decision support system, in the sense that it aids and supports the decisions which are then uh, taken by human beings. Um, in our case, this PMDA is an agent and its reason, reasoning capabilities are predefined and are coded into plans of a BDI architecture. These plans are meant to resemble the expert knowledge of the people uh, the medical staff, the clinicians that have a deep knowledge of the of the problem uh, at hand, which in this case is trauma management. Um, however, uh, in ma in many circumstances, this is not enough to achieve a satisfactory um, efficiency in and efficacy in medical operations, as the variables to consider for each specific situations are uh, too much. Um, also, trauma management, the specific scenario we will consider in a few slides, uh, is uh, uh, especially uh, difficult uh, because human staff needs to react promptly to many heterogeneous situations and there is uh, usually no time to do prolonged uh, analysis of the of the victim of the of the trauma of the injury so many decisions have to be made within the first very few minutes of the of the medical process um so basically the motivation for starting a work is that 
there is a lot of information which a human being cannot process in real time, but that can be uh, exploited for the benefit of the of the patient. Um, so we are looking if uh, something more than expert knowledge can be used in a PMDA uh, a um, agent reasoning uh, reasoning uh, um, routine. So our proposal is to integrate these agent-based assistants with um, some kind of cognitive service. Um, the cognitive service can take the form of many different specific software artifacts, but for us, its main characteristic is that it can learn from data and provide foresights, insights, and suggestions, and um, analysis of patterns uh, buried in data uh, to aid the medical personnel which is interacting with the PMDA. So our first objective is to empower the PMDA with novel capabilities which cannot be uh, achieved by using expert knowledge alone. So in a previous work of ours we enumerated a number of alternatives to actually integrate uh, machine learning techniques with a BDI agent architecture that we take as a, as a reference. Uh, so we, can, we define this kind of five ways in which integration could happen uh, based on whether the machine learning, the cognitive service component will somehow augment the capabilities of the agent which is the first line, basically, uh, or whether the BDI agent should, let's say, govern the way that uh, the cognitive service behaves, which is basically the second line. And uh, another alternative is to have more of a peer relationship between the cognitive service and the agent and an external arbiter that decides uh, how to weight the contributions of the two components. So what happens when uh, the agent will do something, provide a given suggestion uh, to the medical personnel, and instead the cognitive service will do something different. Uh, in this case, a decision has to be made by the, the arbiter on how to weight these two contributions and how to come to a final, uh, a final suggestion or insight to be delivered. Um, in this paper, we took a, a hybrid approach. Uh, in fact, we basically uh, have an hybrid architecture which takes from both uh, architecture A and E in the in the picture B. We have we have seen. Uh, so our architecture works in that the cognitive service, which uh, as we will see is a predictive model, uh, adds a belief to the BDI agent, which is a JSON agent in our case, suggesting a given action based on the prediction model, e the cognitive service embeds. Um, then the agent decides whether to adopt this kind of suggestion or just stick to the plan it had in mind, so to say. So basically why this architecture is an hybrid? Because it is the cognitive service that informs the agent, as in architecture A, but uh, there is some form of arbitration stage, which is the decision whether to adopt such suggestion or not. The peculiarity is that, contrary to architecture E, uh, here, the arbiter is the agent itself, because we use expert knowledge, again, to uh, decide whether to rely on the um, cognitive service prediction or stick to the, to the, to the plan deriving from, from expert knowledge. Um, this is our reference architecture. Uh, so we have a client application, which interacts with, all the, with the, whole, uh, the whole system the personal assistant agent. Uh, this agent is actually uh, engineered on top on the uh, JSON platform 
And on this platform, we added the Cartago uh, platform. They are already integrated in the Giacomo platform. And this enables us to treat the connected service from the agent standpoint as an environmental artifact uh, from which the agent can get uh, observations and with which the agent can interact. Uh, the actual cognitive service in this case we envision to be uh, some form of machine learning model available uh, for instance via uh, web requests. This is the general architecture that we envision uh, which will be actually instantiated in an actual architecture with actual software uh, stacks uh, in a few slides. Um, To validate our uh, proof of concept, our prototype integration, uh, we took as a reference the trauma management uh, scenario. Uh, here there is already a PMDA uh, agent, basically, which is called Trauma Tracker, uh, which is meant to provide uh, a few levels of assistance, so both in tracking medical activities during this uh, very complex process of trauma resuscitation and also to uh, assist uh, clinicians and uh, doctors uh, by generating alerts depending on the patient condition uh, and uh, the procedures that are being performed on the patient. Um, in this system there is an initial assessment of the patient condition which is aimed at quickly identifying whether the patient is suffering from a major trauma or not. And in our validation, we try to understand if adding uh, a cognitive service to the picture, to the system, would improve this first, uh, this first assessment. Um, so the trauma tracker is actually configured with uh, plans, with JSON plans, BDI plans. Uh, um, some of which we see in this in this exemplary table and 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 uh, pseudocode, uh, which are basically meant to quickly understand whether um, the patient is actually suffering of a major trauma. Um, these are all rules that has, have been designed by uh, domain experts, so by by the actual medical staff of the of the trauma center of the Bufalini hospital in, in Cesena. Um, after having applied the trauma tracker without the cognitive service integration to uh, to the clinical practice, uh, we find out by analyzing the, the generated data, the generated logs, that the assessment of uh, major trauma uh, is basically wrong in the uh, more than uh, half of the cases. So as you can see in the slides, 55.6% uh, of the total reports are initially assessed as major traumas, but actually uh, they are not. So after the patient goes to the hospital and further diagnosis can be, can be done, uh, it turns out to be not a major trauma as instead was initially assessed before going to the hospital, for instance, uh, in the ambulance. Um, why this is a problem? Basically because of uh, this is a massive over triage. Uh, many hospital resources this way are wasted because when a major trauma uh, arrives in the hospital, there is a whole team and the uh, rooms in the hospital that are reserved for managing the patient. So alerting the staff for a major trauma when this is not the case is a waste of resources, which could also translate to um, injuries or complications in other patients, which could not benefit from those resources in the same time. Uh, so in this case, our specific goal in augmenting and complementing the trauma tracker with a cognitive service was to reduce over triage. So uh, we adopted a few different models and compared their performance, decision trees, linear support vector machines and random forests. 
and we train it on um, 1330 reports uh, which has been generated in the past years by the by the trauma tracker um, the best decision tree we found are uh, the ones in which uh, in this picture we show the the confusion matrices um, basically on the left you have a very uh, that the model that scores the best uh, overall uh, if we look at accuracy and and the recall uh, so as you can see in the confusion matrix, uh, it is very extremely good in predicting, uh, in labeling uh, minor traumas when uh, a given uh, score of the severity of the patient is below uh, 16. Uh, but it is not so good in predicting uh, the major trauma. Uh, so um, basically what happens here is that well, yes, the model is very good in reducing uh, over triage, uh, but the problem is that that 75% uh, of uh, false negatives uh, could actually be uh, translated to uh, loss of uh, patients, loss of human lives. So uh, even if the technical performances of this model are are good, uh, they are not acceptable on a clinical uh, level. Um, the model on the right instead, whose confusion matrix on the right is, is, uh, is on the right instead, um, does a worse job in reducing over triage, but sensibly improves uh, the false negatives error rate. This is much more clinically acceptable, even if the overall technical performance of the model is, is worse. So, basically, this, um, this learning stage uh, told us that machine learning techniques could actually do something. Uh, for instance, reduce the over triage, but they cannot work in isolation. Because yet again, we have, even in the confusion matrix on the right, we have these 35% of cases which are uh, falsely, uh, wrongly labeled as negative. And this could not be accepted in clinical practice. So, and corresponds to under triage. Uh, so we have also a motivation for a, a further motivation, practical evidence of our goal, that is putting together the PMDA, which always does over triage, and the machine learning pipeline we developed, which instead uh, can mitigate over triage, but incur in under triage. So we integrated uh, the machine learning model, which is actually built using the scikit library in Python, uh, served through a Flask server, and the uh, PMDA of the trauma tracker, which is, uh, uh, as we said, uh, a JSON agent built on top of the uh, Giacomo platform. So this is basically the same picture we have seen before, but with the actual software stack we, we used. So the client application is the trauma tracker in this, in this case. And here, uh, if you remember our architecture integration, uh, we have the two components, the agent and the cognitive service, which is our uh, machine learning pipeline, predictive pipeline. We are missing the arbiter, uh, which in this case is yet again uh, an expert rule. So uh, is yet again a rule or a set of rules which have been defined by uh, medical personnel based on their knowledge. The rules are uh, in pseudocode here. So we take a few reference values like the presence of hemorrhage and the uh, Glasgow comma scale value to assess whether for sure the patient will be a uh, victim of a major trauma, regardless of what the machine learning model tells. Uh, so if we combine uh, the machine learning model and the PMDA agent already in the trauma tracker together and use this very simple rule as an arbiter, we already improve, slightly improve the under triage uh, 
that the machine learning component alone uh, would achieve. Here is, here uh, at the bottom of the slide is the new confusion matrix. It's a slight improvement, but uh, is an improvement. Um, keep also in mind that the original goal was to prevent massive over triage. And in this, this uh, combined integrated model is, is very, very good. Uh, because we go from a 55% uh, to a 30%, uh, basically. Um, so, uh, summing up, in this work, we achieved a working prototype of this uh, BDI, and BDI agency and cognitive service integration, according to one of the conceptually coherent uh, framework we devised, and using technologies which respect this coherence. Uh, we have an early validation that uh, basically gives us two insights. Uh, the former one is to confirm the necessity of complementing these two uh, approaches to uh, providing medical assistance. And the second one is that uh, this combination actually gives rise to, uh, to an improvement. Um, obviously, the results are encouraging, but not yet excellent. We only slightly improved. Uh, using the, the predictive model alone uh, and we reason sensibly improved using the, the agent alone. Uh, so our next steps will be to um, try to uh, train and validate this uh, use case on a much larger sample size. Um, then we want to uh, more deeply compare different explainable prediction models. Uh, obviously, the medical personnel wants to have some kind of backup uh, explanation when they interact with an AI uh, software tool. Uh, so we stick to in this in this case we stick to um, very simple models like as I said, the linear supervisor machine or a decision tree. Uh, but we want to explore, uh, for instance, explainable techniques to improve uh, non-explainable models. And we want to complete the integration with the trauma attacker application because uh, we tested this, let's say, in a, in a uh, laboratory setting, what, but uh, we didn't release the, the prototype to the, to the medical staff. And so uh, instead, one further step is to uh, involve the medical staff in testing the, uh, the application and see whether the uh, effectively, they 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 are comfortable in using it. They can trust the system. Uh, thank you, thank you for your for your time. And if there are any questions, uh, please use the uh, shared document that the uh, workshop organizers uh, provided to you. I will be there um, responding to your to your questions. Many thanks.